This is the Station for Negotiation. My name is Gene Killian. I have been a professional negotiator and lawyer for almost 40 years. And today, to give you a little introduction to the podcast, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the 18th President of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant, nicknamed Sam by his troops. You may be familiar with Sam from the $50 bill if you're fortunate enough to have one. I'm sure you remember Sam from your high school history classes uh, as the general in the Civil War who effectively won the Civil War by defeating Robert E. Lee in Virginia and taking uh, the surrender of the Confederate forces, the Army of Northern Virginia, um, at Appomattox Courthouse in 1865. And Grant, four years after that, became the president of the United States for eight years, and he was known as a reformer, as a positive Uh, a progressive-minded president who put um, African Americans and Jewish Americans in positions of power in his administration, which was unusual, to say the least, at the time. There's also rumors that his administration was riddled with some corruption, but none of that was attributable to him in the end. But apart from his successes in life, if you look at his life, and I, I highly recommend Ron Chernow's book about Grant, You will find that he had two qualities that make for effective negotiators, even though he, by his own admission, was terrible at business. First of all, Grant was absolutely relentless. When he got a goal in mind, he just was single-minded, totally focused, fixed on the goal, and refused to give up. Hard to defeat a guy who absolutely refuses to give up. And Let me tell you, when you read about his life, he had some problems. He battled alcoholism most of his life. He had business failures. He had terrible defeats on the battlefield. Um, He was defrauded by business partners. It was, he went through one catastrophe, from one catastrophe to another, and he dealt with them all because he was relentless. He was also incredibly patient. Uh, Nothing uh, flummoxed him. He just kept his patience, kept his head, and kept forging ahead. And those are two amazingly important qualities to have in business. But I wanted to talk to you for a moment about Sam's, or I should say Ulysses Grant's memoirs, which he wrote in 1884 and 1885, and the story behind them, which you may know. Grant, after he was president of the United States, went into business on Wall Street with a guy named Ferdinand Ward, who, unbeknownst to Grant, was the Bernie Madoff of his day. He was a defrauder. He was running a Ponzi scheme out of the Wall Street business that Grant had invested in, and he lost all of Grant's money. So now, around 1884, Grant is penniless. He's broke, and he's worried about it, obviously, but before he can do anything about it, another tragedy hits him. He's diagnosed with terminal, inoperable throat cancer. So now he's really worried because he knows he's going to die, and he's worried that his wife, Julia, and his family will not have any money to go on with life. He talks to his friend, Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens. Yes, that Mark Twain, the Huckleberry Finn Mark Twain. And Mark Twain convinces him, hey, you need to write your memoirs. I'll help you sell your memoirs. You'll make money, and you'll be able to take care of your family. So in about 1884, Grant sits down in his New York apartment and starts writing out his memoirs longhand. Eventually, he moves to a cottage in upstate New York, and he sits on the front porch in terrible pain, because remember, this is 1884, 1885. They didn't have the kind of drugs we have today, and he's dealing with this horrible throat cancer, and he sits there all day, every day, writing, writing, writing his memoirs in longhand. And if you ever get a chance to read any of his memoirs or all of his memoirs, which are freely available all over the internet and on Amazon, I highly recommend that you take a look at them because if you're interested in history, they're absolutely fascinating. But beyond that, he's an extremely clear writer, just very clear, very direct, a wonderful writer. And in fact, he was known in the army as someone who wrote orders that could not be misunderstood because they were so clear. But early in his memoirs, he tells the story of a negotiation he engaged in when he was a young boy on a farm in Ohio. He was living in Ohio, and a couple of towns over, there was a man who had a colt that Ulysses Grant very badly wanted to buy. 
And he talked to his dad about it, and his father was ambivalent, but eventually gave in. And early in the, as I said, early in the memoirs, Grant tells this story uh, about the negotiation he engaged in to try to buy the Colt. And it's kind of funny, so I'm, I'm just going to read it. It's a short paragraph. And here's what Grant writes. There was a Mr. Ralston living within a few miles of the village who owned a Colt, which I very much wanted. My father had offered $20 for it, but Ralston wanted $25. I was so anxious to have the colt that after the owner left, I begged to be allowed to take him at the price demanded. My father yielded, but said $20 was all the horse was worth and told me to offer that price. If it was not accepted, I was to offer $22.5, and, and if that would not get him, to give the $25. I at once mounted a horse and went for the colt. When I got to Mr. Ralston's house, I said to him, Papa says I may offer you $20 for the colt. But if you won't take that, I am to offer you $22.5. And, and if you won't take that, to give you $25. It would not require a Connecticut man to guess the price finally agreed upon. Now, that's a funny story for a lot of reasons, and obvious, the most obvious one is that Grant is a terrible poker player. He, he put all his cards on the table so the other side could see uh, where he really wanted to go, which obviously is a fatal flaw in any negotiation. But it calls to mind a couple of questions. Actually, it calls to mind more than a couple, but for the purposes of this short inter introduction, I will talk about two. First of all, people lie in negotiation all the time. They mislead you as to where they want to go, as to what their bottom line is. And some of them, if they're aggressive negotiators, will lie to you to your face as to the facts. So the first question is, is it okay to lie in a negotiation? Is it ethically permissible to lie in a negotiation? And what happens if you lie in a negotiation and get caught? A second question any negotiation involves the free exchange of information. I shouldn't say free exchange. It involves the exchange of information. And so the question is, how much information should you give to the other side in a negotiation? If you want to have a cooperative negotiation looking for what the books call a win-win resolution, should you give more information? Those are the kinds of questions we're going to explore on the Station for Negotiation, and we're going to take a look at history, books like Grant's memoirs. We're going to take a look at negotiations in literature. We're even going to take a look at negotiations in the Bible. And we're going to take a look at some negotiations that I've engaged in personally over the last 40 years. I hope you'll join us on the ride. We're going to try to become better communicators and negotiators by examining these negotiations by trying to figure out what went wrong and what went well. This is Gene Killian at the Station for Negotiation signing off and reminding you that negotiation is life. Hey, thanks for listening to the Station for Negotiation podcast. Until next time, you can keep up with us on social media at the following places. On X, formerly known as Twitter, it's at STN numeral four negotiation. That's at STN for negotiation. On Facebook, you can hit us up at facebook.com backslash station numeral four negotiation pod. That's facebook.com slash station numeral four negotiation pod. Over on Instagram, you can reach us at at station numeral four negotiation. Again, that's at station for negotiation. On LinkedIn, station numeral four negotiation podcast. Again, that's station for negotiation podcast. Over on YouTube, we're at at station numeral four negotiation. That's at station numeral four negotiation. If you want to shoot us an email, you can do that at station numeral four negotiation pod at gmail.com. That's station for negotiation pod at gmail.com. So we'll see you next time on the Station for Negotiation podcast. And until then, remember negotiation is life. <laughs> <laughs>